answers from as far as the eye can see to as close as the ground you're spinning on. From science and literature to history, math, and beyond. This is Academically. I'm Clark Anthony. Welcome to Academic League Action here on ITV, coming to you from the campus of the San Diego County of Office of Education. Uh, we are hosting two teams from East County, Grossmont Union High School District, in this particular match. It is West Hills taking on Monta Vista High. We'll meet the coaches and the players, and then the questions and answers will start flying. Corey, come on over here. Corey Biggerstaff is uh, the coach for West Hills High. Good to see you again. Hello. Hi. Welcome back. She has a degree in biology from SDSU and a master's from the University of Arizona. She teaches biology and AP biology and also chairs the science department. Corey has coached academic league for, I think, five or six years now. Is that about right? Uh, this is your first year coaching solo, though. How's it going? It's going. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, then the second part of that is your season is about over. So Yeah, this we have one more match actually tomorrow, but it's been fun. I'm sad that I was doing it alone, but these are a good group of kids. Yeah, well, you're not alone. You have all of them, you know. It is interesting because the East County runs their matches in the uh, fall and winter, and then most of the rest of the leagues in the county run theirs in the spring, so it gets a little confusing for all of us from time to time. Would you please introduce your starting lineup from left to right? I will. Um, on the left, we have Carmen. She is a junior, and she also does tennis, and her plans are to be a forensic scientist and then we have Ashlyn and Ashlyn is a senior she's been doing academic league with us all her time at West Hills I think we couldn't decide if that was true or not and she I'll buy it yeah <laughs> she was in my biology class her freshman year and AP but she wants to be an English teacher and uh, she yep, is a senior so then we have our captain who is Clayton and Kay Layton is our mathematician, but he wants to go to Cal Poly. He has also done cross country and track all four years at West Hills. And then we have Chris, or Christopher, and he is also a senior. And this is actually only his second year playing on the team, but his interests are in politics. He currently works on a local campaign. He loves to debate, and his plan is to attend a school and study international politics. His preference would be Georgetown. And then we have Sophie, and Sophie is also a senior, and she wants to study environmental engineering. We need that, and we need some good politicians, by the way, too, so hang in there. Thank you very Thank much. You. you take your spot over there. Come on over here, Megan. We're going to talk to Megan now. Uh, Megan Broad is abroad. <laughs> we just said that earlier. Either <laughs> way, she's right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, is a uh, the coach for Monte Vista and also is a graduate of American University with a master's from UC Irvine. She teaches chemistry and biology. It's her fourth year in education, the first in the classroom, also the first coaching academic league. How, how have you enjoyed that so far? Oh, it's been wonderful. It's so great getting to know all these wonderful students. We usually find when they come here that they, they are self-motivated, you know, they, they, they enjoy having a coach, but sometimes I have the feeling that they are doing much of the coaching. Is that true? Very much so. They've got each other's backs, and it's really awesome to see the camaraderie between them all. Yeah, makes, makes it all worthwhile. Would you introduce your starting lineup, please, left to right? Sure. Um, all right. On our left, we have Jalen. She's a senior, and it's her first year in academic league. Her favorite school subjects are art and science, and she's a part of Key Club, National Honor Society, and Girls Tennis. Uh, Jalen wants to major in psychology and animation at UCSD to pursue a career combining cognitive psychology and art. And her hobbies include drawing, playing piano, and occasionally baking. Um, next we have Justice. She's a junior and it's her third year in academic league. Her favorite subjects are statistics and math. Um, and her plans are to study data analytics and computer, computer science at Texas A&M to become a data analyst. And her hobbies and interests include oil painting and computer programming. Um, next we have Bill, he's our captain. Um, he's also a junior and it's his third year in academic league. His favorite subject is history and he is very active at Monta Vista, part of crochet club, uh, cross country, key club, track, volleyball, and culinary club. Um, he plans to study computer science, game and interactive media design at UCI, UCSD, or UCLA, 
after which he plans to pursue a career in programming and software development. And his hobbies include playing the piano, drawing, crocheting, and reading. Um, next, we have Elizabeth, um, a senior in her first year in Academic League. Her favorite subjects are art and history, and she's played varsity tennis for three years at Monta Vista. And Elizabeth would like to dual major in history or culture um, and art and minor in environmental science, after which she would like to pursue a career in animation uh, to tell stories that will inspire generations to come. Um, she enjoys playing tennis, drawing, and painting, and would like to pursue color guard again, relearn how to play the clarinet, and learn how to play the piano. Um, and last but certainly not least, we have Calvin. Um, Calvin's a junior, and it's his first year in academic league. His favorite, his favorite subject is chemistry. He's active in band and serves as the treasurer of Green Club. Um, Calvin would like to study chemistry at Johns Hopkins University or Harvard, and he would then like to pursue a career as a chemist. And outside of school, his hobbies and interests include Boy Scouts, archery, and music. So between the two teams, it looks like we have a pretty good mix between juniors and seniors. And you have to remember that these are high school students. Sometimes you listen to the answers that they give, and it's amazing. Good luck to you and the team. Thank you so much. All right. Let's go for our moderator now. Brian Anderson has been around for a while. He's in his 36th year of teaching math at Grossmont in the district. He's currently at Valhalla. He's involved with Academic League since 1992. He has coached. He has also moderated for 25 years, over 200 matches. It is Brian's fifth appearance here on ITV, and you know what that means. We'll be awarding him a lovely tote bag after the match. I thought it was a silk not jacket. Not really, not really. It's, it's all yours, Brian. <laughs> if I didn't know I wasn't going to get the tote bag, I'm not sure I'd be here. Welcome, everybody. Thank you, Clark, for the introduction. You guys know how the game is played. Let's get well, Let's start the clock with our very first toss-up. What? is the popular title of the painting entitled Arrangement in Gray and Black Number 1. West Hills. Whistler's Mother. Whistler's Mother is correct. Your bonus. Identify each of the following elements in the rare gas group. The first is a highly radioactive gas. The second is a gas capable of reacting chemically to form compounds. And finally, the third is an inert gas used to protect active metal surfaces while they are being welded together. Could the first one be radon? I don't know. Yeah, probably. I guess what is the for the second one? Is it chlorine? So inert one is that. Can you repeat the third one, please? Uh, inert gas used to protect active metal surfaces while they are being welded together. Uh, for, the, for the first one, we have radon. For the second one, we have chlorine. For the third one, we have helium. Uh, the first is correct. The second one, there are a lot of right answers. Xenon, radon, or krypton. Third one was argon. You've probably heard of that if you ever... Talk to anybody who welds. That's only good for one point, but let's go to a new toss-up. Express the following relationship as an equation using K as the constant of variation. The measure of the central angle C of a regular polygon varies inversely with the number of sides N. West Hills again. C equals K divided by N. That is correct. Your bonus. Name the following associated with the year 1968. The first is this famous African-American civil rights leader assassinated on April 4th. Second, this presidential candidate assassinated on June 5th. And finally, the city where a riot took place outside the Democratic National Convention. I'm 100% sure. I was reading about that yesterday. <laughs> I'm listening almost to contradict Chris, I'm just going to say it. Okay. Uh, for the first one, we have Martin Luther King Jr. For the second one, we have Robert Kennedy. For the third one, we have Chicago. And you have all five points. And another toss-up on the way. Name the spongy, light, igneous rock that is used in solid or powdered form for removing stains, smoothing, and polishing. Pumice. Pumice is the one we were looking for there. Name the smallest recognized sovereign state on the mainland Asian continent located between Syria and Israel. West Hills. Lebanon. Lebanon is correct. Your bonus. Give the composer of each of the following operas. The first, The Barber of Seville. The second, La Boheme. 
And finally, Rigoletto. Rigoletto. The first one is R. What, can you repeat the second one? La Boheme. Answers, please. Um, for the first and third, we have Verdi. For the second one, we have Puccini. Uh, the second and third are correct. The first one was Rossini. So I can only give you three points there, but there's another toss-up on the way. The most common downfall of Greek tragic heroes, what is the Greek term for overwhelming or excessive pride? West Hills. Hubris. And that is correct. Your bonus. Given the fraction 2 over the quantity 2 plus 3i, question number 1, what kind of number is the denominator? Complex. Question number 2, what is the conjugate of 2 plus 3i? And finally, what is an equivalent fraction that has an integral denominator? Answers, please. Uh, for the first one, we have complex number. For the second one, we have 2 minus 3i. And for the third one, we have 2 divided by the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 plus 3i with respect to x. Um, the first two are correct. The third one is incorrect. Integral, when it's used as an adjective, is the, it is the ad adjective form of integer. So that's a really fancy way of saying rationalize the denominator. So it was a trick question. I wonder who wrote that. In Walt Disney's Fantasia, a pink hippop hippopotamus dances to Dance of the Hours from a ballet by Amilcar Ponchiella. What is the name of this ballet? It was La Gioconda was the ballet from that movie. All right, another toss up. What is 84 degrees converted to radians? 84 pi divided by 180 radians. Stop the clock, please. I've got to do some quick math and convert his answer. Yeah, it's an unanticipated answer. The instructions did not say to reduce it. So let's go ahead and start the clock in. Um, the instructions did not say to reduce it. And so you didn't have to. And so that is the equivalent answer. So I do need to give that to you. So you get your bonus. Answer each of the following about Japanese fairy tales. The first, a warrior defends a dragon king by killing one of these 100-legged creatures. The king then gives the warrior a never-empty bag of rice. Second, an old woman finds a large peach in a river where she and her husband cut it open to eat it. They find this living creature inside. And finally, this stinging sea creature is said to have been beaten to a pulp for failing in a mission for the Dragon King of the Sea. Um, the last one, Stingray or a, uh, or a puffer fish? I'll, I'll say Stingray, I don't know. But... Can you repeat the second one, please? An old woman finds a large peach in a river. When she and her husband cut it open to eat it, they find this living creature inside. Inside a peach. Answers, please. Uh, for the first one, we have centipede. For the second one, we have worm. The third one, we have jellyfish. Uh, the first and third are correct. The second one was a human child. So um, only three points there, but there's always another toss up. Give me one moment. What is the speed of light in meters per second? West Hills. Three, 300,000 meters per second. 300,000 meters per second. I'm converting it. Um, I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Um, what is the speed of light in meters per second? Monta Vista? 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meter. That is the correct answer. You're de we are off by a couple decimal places. Uh, your bonus. Pencils and papers ready. A moving ball 
with mass V and velocity, I'm sorry, mass M, velocity V, my apologies, has a kinetic energy of X joules. Give the ball's kinetic energy in terms of X after each of these changes. The mass is doubled, the velocity is tripled, and finally, the mass is reduced by 75% and the velocity is doubled. Answers, please. We have two MV equals X for all three. Two, two MV, I can't give you any of those. So the, the equation you want to use in this situation is MV squared. So if you double the, the mass, it would be 2X. If you triple the velocity, it'd be 9X. And then if you do the 75% and the double, it actually, they cancel each other out and it just stays the same, it's X again. So no points there, but there's always a new toss up. Name the first person representing the Republican Party to be elected president of the United States. West Hills. President Lincoln. That's the man. And your bonus. Name the representatives for each of the following countries at the peace conference at Versailles, which ended World War I. France, the United States, Wilson. Great Wilson. Britain. It was no, Churchill. it's not Churchill. It not? Um, it's the guy before him. Gosh, the Who's failure it? of a prime minister, Chamberlain. Chamberlain. Who's uh, maybe it's a Chamberlain? Mm. Maybe I know he was before. Um, Who's uh, friends? Five seconds. Huh? Who's friends? Answers, please. Uh, for the first and second, we have Wilson. For the third, we have Chamberlain. Uh, Wilson is correct. For the second one, from France, it was George. Clemenceau, and from Great Britain, it was David Lloyd George. David Lloyd George, only one point there. Toss up, give the title or the author of the novel in which the main character is Seely, an oppressed black woman. Monta Vista. The color purple. That's the one, your bonus. Identify, oh, identify the following roles played by the actress Idina Menzel. The first, she played this character in the original Broadway cast of Wicked. Second, she was to be the voice of a villain in the movie Frozen, but was changed to voice this character so she could sing Let It Go. Aww. And finally, <laughs> she played this role in a Disney version of Verdi's Aida. Answers, please. Uh, for number one, we have Alphaba, and for numbers two and three, we have Elsa. It, the first and second are correct. Oh, Amneris sure. is the character from Aida, Amneris. So three points and a new toss-up. A silver square is in the middle of a knobless yellow door to the right of two coffee urns. Name this painting, which shows an ad for Philly's cigars above and outside a New York diner containing lonely people. Its painter is Edward Hopper. West Hills. The Nighthawks. Um, stop the clock, I need a ruling from the judge on that. You accept it? Okay, it's just Nighthawks, but we will take the Nighthawks. Um, let's go ahead and start the clock again, and a, you get your bonus. Give the measure of each interior angle in the following figures. The first, a regular pentagon. Second, a regular hexagon. And finally, we'll end up with a regular octagon. And again, interior angles. Oh, no, I remember. 180 to 180 Answers, please. Uh, 
we have 108 degrees for all three. And it works for the first one. The second was 120 degrees. The third was 135 degrees. What is the most probable sum when rolling a pair of standard six-sided dice? Monta Vista. Seven. Lucky seven. You got it. Your bonus. Tom Sawyer and the Adventures of Huckleberry Finn are two well-known novels by Mark Twain. Name three of the other four most well-known books written by that famous author. Answers, please. We have more adventures from Huckleberry <laughs> Finn for all three. Um, uh, let's see. I know I can't take that. Um, I would have taken a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, Life on the Mississippi, Puddinhead Wilson, or The Prince and the Pauper. Any of those would have worked. All right. A new toss up. This law's namesake entities are subject to the Sacker Tetrod equation. Van der Waal's correction of this law adds the correction factors A and B. Name this law that combines Charles Boyle's, Gay-Lussac's, and Avogadro's laws into its equation. West Hills. The inert gas law. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. This law's namesake entities are subject to the Sacker Tetrode equation. Van der Waal's Wall's correction of this law adds the correction factors A and B. Name this law that combines Charles, Boyle's, Gay Lussac's, and Avogadro's laws into its equations. You were so close. The ideal gas law. The ideal, you probably remembered it as soon as you said it. That's usually the way it goes. A new toss-up. The Allies had to create a fake military operation to convince the Axis that an attack would occur at the Pas de Calais. Identify this World War II battle that took place on the sands of beaches. West Hills. D-Day or D Normandy. Either one was acceptable. Your bonus. Identify any three of the four major macromolecules in the human body. Answers, please. Um, we have lipids, carbs, or carbohydrates and proteins. And that's good. The other one that you didn't need to mention was nucleic acids, nucleic acids, and that's good for five points. And a new toss up. Two plus two <laughs> equals five is ultimate. West Hills. 1984. Sorry, that is incorrect. Two plus two equals five is ultimately accepted as truth by what main character in George Orwell's novel, 1984? Monta Vista. Winston. Winston is the one. So it's always worth taking a risk sometimes getting in early. But you get the bonus. Name the decade that saw each of these major conflicts. The Spanish-American War, the Civil War, and the war that inspired the lyrics to the national anthem. Answers, please. We have the 1850s for the first two and 1770s for the third one. Can't give you any of those. Spanish-American War was 1890s, Civil War was 1860s, and the war that inspired the lyrics to the national anthem was 1810. So no bonus points there. The new toss-up. In drawing or paintings, what is the name given to the place where parallel lines appear to converge or cease to exist? Monta Vista. Vanishing point. That's the one. Your bonus. Give the word being defined by each of the following. 
Each answer contains two R's and two D's. The first, exposed to plutonium. The second is deteriorated, especially by chemical action. And finally, the third is lacking in control, coherence, or direction. Can you repeat the stem, please? Give the word being defined. Each answer contains two R's and two D's. Number one is irradiated. Can you repeat the second? Deteriorated, especially by chemical action. Answers, please. We have irradiated for all three. It works for the first, of course, corroded and rudderless. And it's those kind of words that as soon as you hear them, you know they're right. For the quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. What's the discriminant? West Hills. B squared minus 4ac. And that is correct, of course. Uh, your bonus, 2018 marked 100 years since the end of World War I. During the war, Germany and Austria joined this group that fought the Triple Entente. Second, barbed wire was used to make many fences during the war until this vehicle was developed that could just run over it. And finally, what we call a submarine was called this by the Germans. Is it the first one? Axis? No, it's... Uh, can you repeat the first one, please? During the war, Germany and Austria joined this group that fought the Triple Entente. Answers, please. Uh, for the first one, we have Axis. For the second one, we have Tank. For the third one, we have U-Boat. Second and third are correct, of course. It was known as the Triple Alliance. The Triple Alliance. So three points there, but there's a new toss-up. Cons oh, we're gonna, coaches wanna take a timeout? So we'll be back momentarily. Welcome back. West Hills captain, why don't you introduce the new player? Uh, we have Mark Tapia, who's a senior. All right, welcome. And Monta Vista, you've got a player. Uh, we brought in Nathaniel Hernandez, and he's a junior. All right, well, welcome to all the new players. Let's go ahead and start the clock with a new toss-up. Considered hyper-carnivorous because its diet is primarily meat, this creature walks on sea ice and eats mostly seals. Monta Vista. Polar bear. That's the one. Your bonus. In music, tell what fraction of a beat an eighth note would have in each of the following time signatures. Three quarter waltz time, two two or cut time, and finally twelve eight time. Two two sixteen. Three four is half. And sixteen, and then twelve eighth. That's wacky stuff. Wiggity, wiggity, whack. I'm just gonna go um, one, one, six. Answers, please. For the first, we have one half. For the second, we have one sixteenth. And for the third, we have one sixth. Uh, the first is correct. The second, I think you went the wrong direction. It's one fourth. And the last one is just one. So one point there and a new toss up. What is the name of the United States Caribbean Commonwealth? That when translated means rich. Monta Vista. Puerto Rico. That's the one. Your bonus. What is the derivative with respect to x for each of the following? The cosine of x, the natural logarithm of x, the tangent of x. And then tangent is tangent x secant x, right? We know it's secant, secant squared of x. Secant squared. Yeah. So. Is it second. Uh, could you be the second? Natural log of x. One over x, right? Okay. Uh, for the first, we have negative sine of x. For number two, we have one over x, and for number three, we have secant squared of x. And that, of course, is all five points. Sure. And a new toss-up. All the elements in the halogen family share what same specific valence? Monta Vista. Seven. Sorry, that is incorrect. All the elements in the halogen family share what same specific valence? West Hills. Negative one. That is correct. Your bonus. Give the following <laughs> information related to author Edgar Allan Poe. He died and is buried in this eastern city. 
whose NFL team is named the Ravens in his honor. This Poe story, named for the container of wine, tells how Montresor killed Fortunato. In this Poe tale that takes place in Paris, the crimes are committed by an orangutan. Can you repeat the third one, please? In this Poe tale that takes place in Paris, the crimes are committed by an orangutan. Uh, for the first one, we have Baltimore. For the second one, we have Decanter. For the third one, we have the zoo. Uh, the first is correct, of course. The cask of Amontillado and the murders in the Rue Morgue. So, a new toss-up. Only one point there. Name the person who revealed the business practices of the Standard Oil Company in the book, The History of the Standard Oil Company. This person later published an autobiography in 1940 entitled... West Hills. Wells. Sorry, that is incorrect. Name the person who revealed the business practices of the Standard Oil Company in the book, The History of the Standard Oil Company. This person later published an autobiography in 1940 entitled All in a Day's Work. Monta Vista. Du Bois. Tarbell. Tarbell was the author of that. What character in the Scarlet Letter causes self-inflicted pain with a whip? That, of course, was Dimsdale. What 1957 Leonard Bernstein musical is based on the plot of Shakespeare's Romeo and Ju West Hills? West Side Story. West Side Story is that. correct. Always Identify the meaning of each of the following word stems. Carp, at, in the, like in the word carpology. Anth like in the word chrysanthemum, and fill, as in the word chlorophyll. Can you repeat the second one, please? Anth, as in the word chrysanthemum. Can you repeat the second? Anth, in the word chrysanthemum. Answers, please. For the first one, we have life. For the second one, we have new. For the third one, we have color. Can't give you any of those. That's one of the tougher questions tonight. Carp is referring to fruit. Anth, flower, which kind of makes sense. And fill actually means leaf, chlorophyll. So no points there, but a new toss-up. What is the sign of pi over two? West Hills. One. That is it, your bonus. Identify each of the following U.S. warships. The first was a battleship blown up in Havana in 1898. The second is a battleship on which Japan signed the truce ending World War II. And finally, electronic intelligence ship captured with its crew of 83 men off the coast of North Korea in 1968. Can you repeat that last one, please? Electronic intelligence ship. Uh, for the first one, we have the USS Maine. For the second one, we have the USS Missouri. For the third one, we have the USS Massachusetts. It was the Pueblo for the third one. The first two are correct, of course. Three points. Which of the following is not the name of a common gas law? Charles's law, Brian's law, or the general gas law? West Hills. The general gas law. Sorry, that is incorrect. Which of the following is not the name of the common gas law? Charles Law, Brian's Law, or general gas law? Monta Vista. Brian's Law. That is correct. Your bonus. Name the famous artists associated with each of the following motifs. The first, Tahitian subjects and scenes. Second, ballet dancers. And finally, Parisian nightlife in music halls and cabarets such as the Moulin Rouge.
have Monet for all three. And it doesn't work for any of them, I'm afraid. Gauguin, Degas, and Toulouse-Lautrec is who we were looking for there. But a new toss-up is always forthcoming. What policy implemented by Franklin Roosevelt basically provided that no Latin American state has the right to interfere in the internal or external of Monta Vista. Good neighbor policy. That's the one, your bonus. Tell whether each of the following numbers is rational, irrational, or imaginary. 0.777, repeating. The cube root of six. And finally, the square root of negative one. Imaginary. Irrational, irrational, for the first two we have irrational and for the last one we have imaginary. The second and third are correct. 0.77 repeating is rational. It can be expressed as seven ninths. So, and I'm pretty sure someone at the table said that. Okay, let's see. Let's go with a new toss up. In this novel, the title character is told by a fox. You become responsible for for, I'm sorry, you become responsible forever for what you've tamed. This, the character journeys to planets where he meets a king with no subjects and a businessman who counts stars. Name this novel, Monta Vista. Little Prince. The Little Prince is the one. Um, your bonus, give the following information about works by Robert Louis Stevenson. The first, this novel mentions Billy Bones and a parrot named Captain Flint. The second, he wrote his novel, Kidnapped, features this character. And finally, he wrote a new set of these medieval tales, far fewer than a thousand and one. Arabian Nights or something? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Repeat the second. His novel, Kidnapped, features this character. Answers, please. Uh, for number one, we have SpongeBob. For number two, we have Hostage. And for number three, we have Arabian Nights. Uh, the third is correct. Um, Treasure Island was the first one. Second one was super tough. David Balfour. David Balfour is who we were looking there. And it's called The New Arabian Nights. And so that's good for one point there. Um, give the title of the fresco painted by Leonardo da Vinci on the wall of the convent at Santa Maria in Milan, Italy. West Hills. The Last Supper. Yep, everybody knows which one it is, but nobody knows where it is. Um, time for some physics. The first, name the theory proposed by Einstein, often contrasted with its special type. Second, the theory just mentioned predicts that what constant is also the speed of gravitational waves. And finally, whose experiment named for two scientists proved the speed of light is constant by disproving the existence of a luminiferous ether? Can you repeat the third? What experiment named for two scientists proved the speed of light is constant by disproving the existence of a luminiferous ether? Answers, please. Uh, for the first one, we have general relativity. For the second one, we have light. For the third one, we have the photoelectric effect. Um, the first and second are correct. It was known as the Michelson-Morley experiment. The Michelson-Morley <laughs> experiment. All right, grab a pencil. If Bill is 24 years old, John is five years less than half of Bill's age. How old is John? Monta Vista. I'm sorry? Seven. Seven is correct, of course. Name the following famous Americans of the 1920s. The first, the Harlem Renaissance poet best known for his poem, I Too Sing America. So the second is the first Native American sports hero to win an Olympic medal, as well as become a professional football player. And finally, the pilot who became a national hero after uh, flying nonstop yeah. from New York to Paris. Why 
Can you repeat the first? Harlem Renaissance poet, best known for his poem, I Too Sing America. Have Sure, okay. I'm going for the second scene. Answers, please. Uh, for numbers one and two, we have Hemingway, and for the third, we have Lindbergh. Lindbergh, of course, is correct. The first was Langston Hughes, and the, the famous athlete was Jim Thorpe. So one point and a new toss-up. Give the name for the connective tissue sac in closing the heart. West Hills. Pericardium. Pericardium is correct. Your bonus. Identify these animated Disney movies from pairs of their <clears throat> songs. The first, The Grasslands Chant and Circle of Life. Second, The Dog Howl Song and World Without Fences. And finally, Hail to the Princess Aurora and The Burning of the Spinning Wheels. Can you repeat the second one, please. The Dog Howl Song and World Without Fences. It's either Fox and the Hound or Lady. I think it's Fox and the Hound was a Fox and the Hound was a musical. It made me cry when I was um, For the first one, we have Lion King. For the second one, we have Lady and the Tramp. For the third one, we have Sleeping Beauty. And you've got all five points. All right. So let's go ahead with another toss-up. The most famous of these people is Tenzing Norgay, who helped Sir Edmund Hillary in 1953 West Hills. Sherpa? Sherpa is exactly what we were looking okay. for. The measure of the supplement of an angle is four times the complement of the angle. Find the following. The angle, the supplement of the angle, and finally, the complement of the angle. Can you repeat the stem, please? The measure of the supplement of an angle is four times the complement of the angle. Answers, please. <clears throat> For the first one, the angle is 22.5 degrees. For the second one, it's 157.5 degrees. For the third one, it's 67.5 degrees. Yeah, I'm afraid I can't give you any of those. It, the math came out a little cleaner than that. And it was 60 degrees, 120 degrees, and 30 degrees. And that is the end of our match. Congratulations to both teams. And here's Clark Anthony. And very well played by both teams. I thought, sure, at some point somebody was going to break into a Disney song, you know, Frozen something or other. 77 to 47, West Hills got off to an early lead, never relinquished it. But Monte Vista didn't give up. You were in the match the whole way. Congratulations for that. Congratulations to West Hills for winging, winning and also for getting the moderator to say chrysanthemum three times in a row and, and did very well, Brian. Congratulations. Thank you for joining us. We hope you'll tune in again next time for more Academic League action right here on ITV. Students? Uh, I guess.